Hey everyone, in today's video we are going to be comparing the 35mm focal length versus the 50mm focal length for portrait photography. So I've already done this video comparing these two focal lengths for travel photography, so if you want to watch that and haven't seen it yet, I'll leave it linked down below. But today we are going to be focusing on a portrait photo shoot and seeing how these two lenses compare. Um, so today's model is Shanice, Lydia did hair and makeup, and Dan is behind the camera filming. So I really hope you guys enjoyed today's photo shoot. Let's see what that looks like. It looks quite dollhousey. Aki. The first test I'm doing is taking a mid-length portrait with both lenses and framing it so they look as similar as possible to each other. We had this really cool location with some interesting lines from the building, which I thought would be great to see side by side shot on both lenses. I've also included some before and after shots so you can see what the photos look like straight out of the camera and then edited with my Aspen Lightroom preset pack which I'll leave linked down below. I love using these presets when I'm after a clean edit, not changing what the original image looks like too much, just making the photo and the colours pop. And then I'm going to take the same photos on the other lens, try and keep the same settings for you guys. In this first comparison image, we can see that the model looks quite similar in both shots, but the main difference we have between both lenses is the compression. In the 35 image, you can see just that little bit more of the environment with the lamp to the left and the dappled light to the right, whereas in the 50mm shot, we have an overall cleaner background. <laughs> so, just in the middle. So I want to take a close-up portrait here. can kind of like bring your shoulders in a little bit, yeah. I'm actually leaning forward like that, looks really nice. The next comparison we have are these close-up portraits. I do personally love what the 35mm shots look like, and if you guys have been around on my channel, you would know that I use this lens quite a lot. Both the 35 and 50 focal lengths can distort facial features, with the 35 being more obvious and the 50mm more subtle. So pretty. Aww. Like the whole color scheme yeah, works really nicely. By the way, in case you haven't seen it yet, I've made a video taking photos on all of my prime lenses on both a full frame and a crop frame camera, which can give you a better idea of what all these focal lengths look like side by side. So I'll leave both those videos linked down below if you guys want to watch. Lastly, in this location, I took a mid-length sitting down shot where I wanted to use the background to frame my portrait. Yeah, I really like those little movements of you kind of tilting your head around. Yeah. In this case, I really liked how the 50mm compression really helped the doorway frame Shanice, whereas in the 35mm shot, the doorway doesn't really have the same effect and looks more distracting rather than helpful in the background. Here, maybe you could kind of grab onto the fence and hang off a little bit. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this one I think I'll get like a full body shot. <laughs> yeah, that looks really nice there. And if you want some movement, you can also pull yourself like back to the fence and then kind of lean back and like just kind of do the swinging motion. <laughs> Perfect. With these full body shots, I didn't get close enough on the 35mm, so I have one comparison with the 35 cropped out, and one comparison where I cropped in the 35mm shot in Lightroom to match the 50 shot. And then I want to get some close-ups here as well, so if you wanted to stand, yeah, a little bit closer to the fence. <laughs> um, could you put one of your hands in your back pocket? Okay. 
look and do you want to try one crossing your arms as well? With these closer up portraits, I found that even though the 50mm should technically have more bokeh due to the compression and the fact that it's a 1.2 compared to the 35 which is a 1.4 lens, the fact that the 35mm is wider and captures more of the background makes it look like the 35 has more depth to the image with this particular angle compared to the 50. And even if you wanted to do one kind of glancing over your shoulder like towards the... Which I found pretty interesting when looking through all the final images. And then a couple looking at me here as well. If I were to shoot on more of an angle with the 50mm to try and mimic that 35 look, the leaves would have covered Shanice's face so we wouldn't really be able to get a usable shot out of that. Yeah, that looks so cool. Okay. Could you lean down towards me a little bit? Like, like, actually like this. Yeah, yeah, that's perfect. And even if you kind of swing your arms just out in front of you. <laughs> you can do like a... Yeah, like, like a crisscrossy. Like like yeah. Okay. <laughs> I was like... <laughs> I like... <laughs> Awesome. Yeah, it feels like, look how pretty that is. Just because of the angle that I'm shooting with, yeah. it looks better if you yeah, if I'm lean leaning. down. Yeah. In the next comparison, I wanted to try a less traditional pose and composition to be able to get these flowers in the background, which were really high up. One thing that made me fall in love with the 35 is the fact that it has more distortion when shooting portraits. I feel like it gives images a more editorial or lifestyle look, whereas the 50mm, as you can see in this comparison, has a more traditional feel to the images. When I first started photography, the Canon 50mm f1.4 was my first and only lens for a whole year to be able to practice taking portraits and other styles of photography with. The reason I decided to go with this lens is because it's quite an all-rounder lens as it's in between a telephoto and a wide angle. Do I need to kind of like lean up a little bit as well? It's slightly wide but doesn't give you distortion like a 35 does and it's an almost portrait lens but not as much as say for example an 85mm. In saying that, depending on how you frame your shots and what kind of location you're working with, you can definitely achieve the looks of both these other focal lengths with just a 50 I think the 50mm is a super important prime lens to have in your kit due to this reason. It's able to do a lot of different things, can to an extent take on the role of some similar prime lenses and can come in handy in many situations. Maybe we'll do a standing one here as well. It's a really nice backdrop. Yeah, <laughs> okay, so we've got some leaves in the far background of the shot. So we're gonna compare the bokeh of the two lenses at wide open, which is 1.4 for the 35 and 1.2 for the 50. I'm really working on my squats right there. <laughs> oh, I love that, that's really nice. Now a little switcheroo. Now we're gonna shoot with the 35. Before we get to the bokeh comparison, I really liked what the 35mm shots were looking like here on the street, so I decided to take a few extra portraits while we were here. Similar to the 50, the 35 is a very versatile focal length for many styles of photography and has its own kind of styles, uh, aka the distortion, to go along with it. The only thing the 35 struggles to be able to capture are great close-up portraits. So I find when I shoot with my 35, I normally also have my 85 on hand to complement it and to be able to take those extra few photos that the 35 can't quite achieve. Okay. 
Anyway, so here's the final bokeh comparison. They look very similar, again, as most of the photos have been looking throughout this video. I do in particular prefer what the 50ml shot looks like here in terms of compression. And with the bokeh, I love that on the 35, we can see those extra few trees in the top of the frame for that extra kind of trail off bokeh that is missing in the 50 shot. Walk a little bit slow and you can kind of swing your arms around and your legs. You ready? You ready? Alright, go for it when you want. Last but not least, of course, we have to do the walking test. As I usually do, I found that these shots were a lot easier to capture on the wider lens, so the 35. Even though I kept looking back while shooting to make sure I wouldn't troop over, I was able to keep my composition correct and I got every single photo in focus except for one. <laughs> All right, when you're ready. On the 50, while we did get some nice photos, since it's a closer up lens, the slightest movement while I was looking back caused my focus point to miss a couple of times. And on top of that, the Canon 50mm f1.2 is pretty notoriously known for not being the sharpest lens in the camera bag. So I had only a small handful of photos to choose from. Since the 50 doesn't have as much distortion as the 35, it is also painfully obvious when I take a crooked photo. Whoops. <laughs> but I guess that is easily fixable in Lightroom. So that's all we have for all the comparisons that we're going to do between the 35 and the 50. I really hope you guys enjoyed today's video and found it helpful. I'd love to know your thoughts of both these focal lengths down in the comments below, as well as which ones were your favorite photos from today. Um, but as always, thank you so much for watching. I make new videos every single week, so I will see you guys all next time. Bye.